In this video, I'm going to explain about the segmentation. Segmentation in real, in traditional networks and also segmentation in Cisco SD access. This is one of the most important topics in Cisco SDA. But before talking about the segmentation in Cisco SD access, let me to explain about the segmentation in traditional networks. Also, I will explain about two types of segmentation, macro segmentation, micro segmentation. And you will hear about these two types in the Cisco SD access course and maybe other courses. Because of that, you should understand what is the difference between the macro segmentation and micro segmentation. I will show you with one simple example in the traditional network, the differences between them. After that, you can easily understand the micro segmentation and micro segmentation function in Cisco SDX. I will explain all of these topics in this video, but you will hear more than this video about these two types of segmentation in future videos. For now, let me to start with macro segmentation. I know that you heard about the VRF or virtual routing and forwarding before this course. You know that in each router we have a global routing table and it means that each router maintain its roots okay in its routing table and the name of this routing table is global routing table or GRT. For example, in global routing table, we have some connected networks. We have some static routes actually, and we have some dynamic learn, dynamically learned routes received from the routing protocols. But you know that we can actually configure, we can define some virtual routers inside our physical router. And each of those virtual routers actually have a routing table and that is the VRF routing table. Actually, in each router, we have, a, we have a, a global routing table and multiple virtual routing and forwarding. You can configure it easily with the VRF definition command in old iOS IP VRF command, okay? And I know that you, know, you have heard about them, only here we are reviewing them. For example, in this scenario, as you can see, we have two routers, router one and router two. And also we have a physical link between them, R1 connected to R2 with this physical link. Also R1 connected, for example, to computer one and computer two and R2 connected to computer three means server three and server four. Actually, we have one physical network, but we can create two logical networks over this actually physical networks. How? With the help of VRFs, or maybe you hear about the VRF light. You know that VRF is a term we hear about it at the first time in MPLS layer 3 VPNs, but VRF can implement in the traditional networks without MPLS, traditional IP network, we call it VRF light. Actually, as you can see in router 1, I define two VRFs, VRF A and VRF B and each of them has its routing table. And also you can configure, for example, two sub interface in the link between the router one and router two, and also the VRFs in the router two. And you know that this is the creation of a virtual network. Assume that here we have a blue virtual network and also a purple, for example, virtual network available in the bottom of the figure. What does it mean? We created two virtual network or two VN over one physical network. And you can create more than this. You can create more than these virtual networks over one physical network. All right. Now let me to explain about the micro segmentation. As you can see in this figure, we have a simple scenario again. And here we have only global routing table. Actually, all of these computers and servers and routers are in one network, one instance of network. By default, when you configure routing, for example, static routing or dynamic routing 
all devices can communicate with each other. But you want to have some policies. For example, you want to have com communication only between the C1 and C3 and C2 and C4. It means that I don't want to have connectivity between the C1 and C4. I don't want to have connectivity between the C2 and C3. Only C1 needs to send and receive traffic from C3 and C2 from C4. You can implement your policy with some type of filtering mechanism. For example, you can configure ACL, extended ACLs. And with the help of ACLs, you permit the traffic from C1 to C3 and deny the traffic from C1 to C4. And also, you can permit the traffic from C2 to C4 and deny traffic from C2 to C3. This is another type of segmentation. We call it micro-segmentation. As you can understand, in this type of segmentation, we segment a network or inside of a network. But in macro segmentation, we segment over each network. Actually, we segment a physical network to multiple virtual networks. This is outside of each network. But in micro segmentation, we implement the segmentation inside of one instance of for example, virtual network or physical networks. And don't forget, it is possible to have both of these two type of network and segmentation. And it means that, for example, you define VRFs. Inside of each VRF, you implement micro segmentation. Actually, we can implement only macro segmentation, micro segmentation, and both macro and micro segmentation. All right, now we can understand SDA or Cisco SD access macro segmentation and micro segmentation. About the macro segmentation in Cisco SD access, actually, the Cisco SDA implements macro segmentation using virtual networks. And a virtual network in Cisco SD access fabric is a virtual routing and forwarding or VRF instance in the traditional network. Okay, and virtual networks maintain a separate routing and switching instances for the devices, interfaces, and subnets within it. In an enterprise network that has users such as employees or contractors who need to communicate with each other, those users are placed in the same VN or virtual network. Okay, the VN may be called, for example, campus users v uh, VN. Okay, and usually guests uh, do not communicate with any other users in the network and can be placed in a separate virtual network. Okay, in a sense, a virtual network consists of similar entities where there is a possibility of communication between these entities, meaning the endpoints that usually talk to each other constantly are placed in the same virtual network. Similar to VRF, traffic between the VNs or virtual networks is not permitted within a Cisco SD access uh, fabric. But as I explained before, in a shared service network, for example, DHCP, DNS, something other like uh, those, uh, we have some scenarios where campus users in the campus VN need to communicate with shared services in the shared service VN again, okay? For a services such as, for example, DHCP, DNS, Active Directory, and so forth. The network administrator needs to leverage road leaking uh, to allow traffic between virtual networks or VNs. For inter-VN communication, such as access to shared services from the campus VN, traffic needs to leave the SD access fabric and the road leaking is performed outside the fabric. I explained it in the previous video. You remember the fusion router. And you know that virtual networks are first level segmentation and ensure zero communication between the forwarding dummies. I will explain more detail about this, but for now you can understand we have a feature with the name of VN or virtual network, and this can provide us 
the actually zero communication between different VNs. Once the traffic leaves the fabric from a VN, the VN either can be handed off to a VRF in the traditional world to keep the macro segmentation throughout or can be fused to the global routing table through a fusion router. You can understand it easily. If I want to have the concept of VN outside of my SDA, we need to import the traffic of each VN to a VRF. But when you want to reach to, uh, for example, uh, to send traffic of each VN to, for example, one shared, ser shared VN, shared service, you need to use Fusion Router. And Cisco DNA Center provisions the configuration of the user-defined VNs. Okay. And I will show you in the configuration part of this course in the next section that how we can configure the VN. We have by default two VNs and you will learn about them. And also you can add more than uh, this. Let me to show you only for one second the VNs that we have in Cisco DNA Center. But the more detail how we can uh, create other VNs uh, will be explained in future videos. This is the Cisco DNA Center dashboard. Here we, in menu, uh, we have the provision and in provision menu, we have virtual networks. Okay. If you click on the virtual networks, you can see that in our campus, now we have in our actually SDA fabric, we have three virtual networks. Campus, I defined it and default underlying VN. This is one of the pre-configured VNs that are available. I didn't configure it. And also the infra VN, also I didn't configure it. Actually, both of these two are default VNs. Actually, you will create the VNs or virtual networks for macro segmentation. Also, this figure uh, can show us an example of two VNs building management and campus users okay where traffic is not permitted between the vns within each specific vn the endpoints are able to communicate with each other to restrict communication between users in the same vn micro segmentation need to be in place okay it means that i have the actually a vn Inside of the VN, I have some policy. Okay, you can implement micro segmentation inside the VN. Okay, but between the VNs, we have macro segmentation. As a use case for SDA macro segmentation, actually, we can assume about a healthcare records. You know that our healthcare records are just as valuable. Uh, to attackers as our credit card numbers and online password. Hospitals are required to have the HIPAA compliant wired and wireless network that can provide complete and constant visibility into their network traffic to protect sensitive medical devices such as servers for electronic medical records, vital sign monitors or nurse workstations so that a malicious device cannot compromise the network. A patient's mobile device, when compromised by malware, can change network communication behavior to propagate and infect other endpoints. It is considered abnormal behavior when a patient's mobile device communicates with any medical devices. SD access can address the need for complete isolation between patient devices and medical facility devices by using macro segmentation and putting devices into different overlay networks, enabling the isolation. All right, about the SDA micro segmentation, as I explained before, here we have, for example, two virtual networks. And you know that because of macro segmentation, we don't have any communication between them. But inside of each VN or virtual network, we want to implement micro segmentation. As you can see, these two components have communication with each other inside of the building management VN 
and other two components as you can see uh, don't have communication between each other and also in the campus users vn i will explain about the detail of a scalable group tags and actually its con and its details in future videos but for now let me to inform you that cisco sd access uses sgt or a scalable group tags for micro segmentation SGTs ensures that you can logically segment the network based on the role instead of segmenting it based on physical topology or IP address. You will learn about the detail of it, but for now let me to inform you that using SGTs or scalable group tags provide the ability to segment the network into either lines of business or functional blocks. Okay, using SGTs bring in a second level segmentation and ensures role-based access control between two groups within a VN. Okay, not between a v, uh, between VNs, in, within a VN actually or virtual network. With SGTs, policies can be created to permit or restrict traffic for clients in the same virtual network. And about the SDA micro segmentation use case, let me to use the university example. You know that students and faculty machines may both be permitted to access printing resources. Okay, but student machines should not communicate directly with faculty machines. And printing devices should not communicate with other printing devices. SD access can address the need for isolation of devices in the same virtual network through micro segmentation by using scalable group tags or SGTs user can be permitted access to printing resources though the printing resources cannot directly communicate with each other. Also, as I mentioned before, we can implement both SDA macro and micro segmentation. For example, in the enterprise, users, devices, and applications all utilize the network to access resources. Building control systems such as page readers and physical security systems such as uh, actually video surveillance devices need access to the network in order to operate, though these devices are segmented into different overlay network than where the user resides. This is the micro segmentation in the enterprise. Also, guest network access is common for visitors to the enterprise and for employee BYOD or bring your own device use. However, the guest network can remain completely isolated from the remainder of the corporate network and the building management network using different overlay networks. Users and devices on the corporate overlay network means inside of a corporate overlay network have different access needs. These users and devices may need access to printing and internal web servers such as corporate directory. However, not all will need access to development servers, employee and payroll data from human resources and other department specific resources. Using a scalable group tags or SGTs, users and devices within the overlay network means within the virtual network can be permitted access to a specific resources and denied access to other based on their group membership. Deploying these intended outcomes for the needs of the organization is simplified by using the automation capabilities built into Cisco DNA Center and those simplifications span both the wired and also wireless domains.